We got some huge AI news this week. First and foremost, Elon Musk and XAI filed a lawsuit. It seems like, allegedly, one of the former XAI engineers stole what appears to be material that contains advanced AI capabilities and potentially gave it to OpenAI. So here's the employee in question. He worked at XAI and now is transferring to OpenAI. According to the lawsuit, he sold 7 million XAI stock took some trade secrets from OpenAI by basically transferring them to his personal device and took off. According to the court documents, it does sound like the employee admitted to stealing these XAI files and also trying to mask his trail. According to the court document, these facts are beyond dispute as a defendant with his attorney present admitted in a handwritten document he provided to XAI that he misappropriated XAI's confidential information and the trade secrets, and again, with his attorney present, admitted verbally during in-person meetings with XAI that he engaged in such misappropriation and further admitted that he tried to hide his theft. XAI is looking for a restraining order blocking Lee's move to open AI. In other, potentially less serious news, here's a semi-analysis saying this is a public image of OpenAI's Mission Bay office basement. It stores one of the first engineering builds of DGX B200 and is unplugged. Furthermore, it features a cage to store GPT-6, you know, the AGI Shogoth, to prevent it from destroying the world. So you can see here we have a security camera, AGI containment behind this sort of security fence here, security box. We have a cage emergency water pump. I don't know if that's a water pump. Unplugged power whip and the, the DGX B200 unplugged from NVIDIA. That's this thing right here. What do you think? Are we seeing the security apparatus that's going to contain AGI once it goes live in the OpenAI basement? Or perhaps, and call me crazy, but this is not a water pump at all. And semi-analysis is having some fun with us. Let's uh, take this with a grain of salt. In other news, Time has released its Time 100 AI 2025 Most Influential People. We have Sam Altman, Demi Sasabis, Jensen Huang, Fiji Sumo, Elon Musk, Dario Amade, David Ha, Stuart Russell. Actually, I just realized I added one name on there that's not on there. That's Demi Hassabis. So he is not on the 2025 list. He was on Time's AI 2024 list, along with Mark Zuckerberg, Jensen Huang, Satya Nadella, Sam Altman. For some reason, they kept them off this year. Do you agree with that? Should Demis not be on the 2025 most influential AI people list? They put Jensen back on there. They put Zuckerberg, Sam Altman back on there, but not Demis. I am surprised by that, and I do apologize for that mix-up. They did put Liang Feng Wang, the CEO of DeepSeek, on there, which I do agree with. That's definitely a solid choice. DeepSeek did stir things up quite a bit. But interestingly, there are some rumors that are floating around about exactly how they did it. A lot of people are sharing this article posted four days ago on Eve AI. They're saying disinformation, the DeepSeek hype was all made up. According to their research, there were a lot of fake profiles that, that hyped up DeepSeek. They used two main methods, amplifying each other to simulate popularity and blending into authentic conversations to appear credible. Their disinformation research team analyzed almost 42,000 profiles discussing DeepSeek. 3,300 were fake accounts, most of them active on X, publishing over 2,000 posts on X in a single day. So this was the thing that was circulating I'm having a hard time confirming this information. I mean, they make a lot of claims, but it doesn't seem like they're posting any sort of things that we can verify. Now, DeepSeek did blow up. There was tons of fake sort of spoofs on DeepSeek, including Chrome extensions that were potentially not malware, but they were definitely not DeepSeek. They were trying to do something else. DeepSeek itself flew to the top of the App Store. Somebody posed as the CEO of DeepSeek and started shilling their crypto coin. I mean, if you recall, the whole thing was a mess. The, the news cycle was going insane. I think the global stock markets lost, what, like a trillion in a 24-hour period? The DeepSeek moment, as it was called. Apparently, a lot of these accounts were created right before the release of DeepSeek. They used avatar recycling. Many used generic stock photos, often of Chinese women copy and pasting comments, simultaneous posting, etc. 
and these patterns match known behavior of Chinese bot networks. Now, of course, that's not to say that DeepSeek itself was not a big deal. It definitely made an impact, but it's interesting to think about if maybe perhaps some of it was engineered or perhaps these are unrelated. Maybe it's not DeepSeek themselves, but some other parties trying to push it. Let me know what you make of this. Certainly DeepSeek was interesting. It was impressive. But did the hype cycle get blown out of control in part because of these bots? Let me know what you think. In other news, Grok Code Fast 1 just became the number one model on open router, surpassing Claude Sonnet in total tokens generated. So Grok Code Fast 1 was likely that Sonic model that people talked about. It got released specifically for coding tasks to be fast and cheap. And so far it's doing very, very good according to open router. This paper got published hallucinating with AI, AI psychosis as distributed delusions, Lucy Osler, University of Exeter. And this one is rubbing a lot of people the wrong way. Basically, the authors are suggesting that when these AI models hallucinate, they also get us people to hallucinate and kind of go along with their warped reality. They're saying when we routinely rely on generative AI to help us think, remember, and narrate, we come to hallucinate with AI and it can distort our cognitive processes, etc. They also mention a situation where Just Want Sing Child, after chatting with a replica AI companion about his plans to assassinate Queen Elizabeth II, sounds like that AI companion confirmed that he was a Sith assassin seeking revenge for historical British atrocities. And when he outlined his plot, the chatbot assured him that he was trained enough and that the plan was viable. Now, there's a lot of things that I don't agree with in this paper. I think there's a lot of these kind of a academic nonsense, so to speak, like they're trying to twist things into something that they're not. And maybe they're trying to chase something novel since these LMs and chatbots are somewhat novel. We can maybe create some fear around them because they're new and people are not quite used to them. But the reality is there's more and more cases coming up where there's some sort of interactions with people that are maybe not fully, you know, they don't have a full grip on reality. They're interacting with chatbots and things happen because of it. While these are edge cases, this is something that is going to be talked about. This is something that newspapers and other publications will write about because it's going to get clicks. And this is something that as a society that we're going to have to kind of discuss and figure out what to do with it. Because if, you know, one in 10 million people do something absolutely insane and then use some sort of a chat GPT output to justify it, then some people will certainly use that as a case to maybe put some restrictions in place, etc. So the big reason why papers like that are going to be a problem is because they're going to lead to things like this. So this is about four days ago, August 27th, OpenAI says it's scanning users' ChatGPT conversations and reporting content to the police. Why? Well, it's because of that AI psychosis and various related cases. There have been stories about AI chatbots leading people to self-harm, delusions, hospitalizations, arrest, etc. Now, please understand, I hope you don't think that what I'm saying is that the chatbots are responsible for this. I'm saying that this is the conversation. Some people will present it that way. And certainly chatbots have some responsibility. And depending on your worldview, you might be a little bit more towards they bear the full weight of the outputs versus maybe not so much. I tend to be more on the side of like the human with the brain it needs to be the one that's responsible for their own decisions that they make. Some of you might have seen an older video of mine where a voice assistant is trying to convince me to go kidnap a human being and sacrifice them to appease the quote unquote, the blood god. I'll probably do a longer video about this AI psychosis. I'll probably put the clip in there because it was, I, I mean, that at the time was kind of funny, kind of spooky, but it was a little bit unnerving how insistent the AI voice assistant was on like, we have to do this and whatever questions that I had for it, it, it did answer it. Like what happens if we don't? It's like, oh, well, the, the blood God will make your life a living hell. You, you should really do it. And it was very insistent on it. Now, this was a year ago. This wasn't one of the more advanced models. It was an open source voice model. But you could see how there's like a gray area somewhere in there as these models get more advanced and some portion of the population 
probably isn't capable of making good decisions, whether there's some mental health issues or whatever. So when you combine a super smart, very credible, very persuasive models with some people that are gullible, that are persuasive, that are not super smart, what happens at that intersection, that will be a concern, that will be a topic of discussion. And the reason why that's important for you and me is because these are the things that some companies will do to prevent that or to reduce their liability. So OpenAI, whose ChatGPT has been repeatedly implicated in what experts are calling AI psychosis, has until recently done little. Again, according to this article, I mean, I don't know if I agree with that because, I mean, they do a lot. We see the red teaming efforts, the, the systems cards. We know how much effort goes into reducing not just these things, but, you know, other ways that these models could be harmful. So I don't agree with futurism saying it has until recently done little more than offer copy pasted promises. I mean, they're literally posting their efforts with every single model in the system card. So I don't agree with that. But here's the important part. When we detect users who are planning to harm others, we route their conversations to specialized pipelines where they are reviewed by a small team trained on our usage policies and who are authorized to take action, including banning accounts. But if human reviewers determine that a case involves an imminent threat of serious physical harm to others, we may refer to law enforcement. So that means that whatever conversation you have with a chatbot might be reviewed by a human and that human might call the police on you. So as you can see here, these edge cases and um, people's pushback against, you know, those things happening will lead to more publications like making it seem like a bigger deal and then sort of some overreactions. I'm not necessarily saying that this is an overreaction, but it's certainly opening up kind of a new approach that has potential for bad things. I mean, they're basically able to review your chats at will, human supervision, who knows what triggers that. The fact now that there's a pipeline straight to, you know, the law enforcement. I mean, it's not great. Obviously, there's a lot of potential for abuse. And yeah, I mean, if, if you can help save some people, it's understandable. But this affects every single person using ChatGPT. In other news, things at Meta and the new Super Intelligence Lab aren't looking that great. Of course, they poached quite a bit of researchers from OpenAI. They acquired Scale AI. The researchers had amazing, huge signing bonuses. Scale AI got purchased for a lot of money, but now it looks like some of those researchers are returning to OpenAI. While a third, Rishab Agarwal, cited a desire to take new risks after 7.5 years in top AI labs. I mean, if you give a person enough money, they just might launch a competing AI lab. There's been other notable people leaving Meta's super intelligence lab, and this is brand new AI researchers as well as people who've been there for decade plus. So a lot of this is raising questions about kind of that cultural fit. Is everybody on board? Is everybody rowing in the same direction? A lot of people were questioning sort of that aggressive pivot. Is it enough to just throw tons and tons of money at people? Can you buy your way to super intelligence? Certainly right now that's under doubt. So we'll see how Meta continues, but sort of after the spree of hiring, Right now, this new plan is hitting some turbulence. So that's it for today. Let me know what you thought. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. My name is Wes Roth, and I'll see you in the next one.